Hi there. So this video is going to be a two-tone wood green. And I have my color that I'm going to use for my base right here. It's a uh, ginger, I mean latte. Come on. There we go. I have my note on here that says it turns green because the swirl that I did with the the coffee look, it turned green in that capacity. I don't think it's going to turn green for what I'm doing now because I'm not mixing it with other colors. So there's a couple different ways that you can wood grain. You can put your inks directly onto your brush like this and just kind of do it like that. Or this is probably the most efficient way. Drop it here, brush it down. And I try to always wear gloves whenever I'm doing inks because I work with my hands all day and the last thing my patients need to see is a bunch of brown smudges on my hand. I know I wouldn't wanna see that. It's really gross. If you don't know what it is, it's really gross. If you know what it is, it's just comical. So I'm just gonna do, um, I'm not gonna worry about the bottom or anything down here really. And I'm really not worried about the rim because uh, after this is sealed with Mod Podge, I'm going to epoxy it and then I'm going to put a decal with removable vinyl over it and then I'm going to spray paint wood grain and peel that up. So because of what I'm using it for, I don't need it to go full coverage. It's really not um, going to matter. So I wanted a lighter color for the bottom of the base color because then it's going to make the top layer really pop. And this is just not working for me today. There we go. I just want to fill in that space. It's going to be a deer head. So really that space right there is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side too because I'm waiting on her to tell me if she wants dad or anything like that on the other side. So I might as well go ahead and do it since it's not that much extra work. I've seen people do baseball bats with this color. It's really cool, especially on the Pilsner shaped glasses. That's a cool turnout. I'm just making this wider so that I have plenty of wiggle room. I can decide where to put my decal placement. Because this color notoriously turns greenish on me, I'm going to let it dry really, really well before I do the next step of sealing it because I want to make sure it's really dry. You don't have to worry about your lines being really straight because wood grain is not perfectly symmetrical. You want some extra grain like that, some dark spots here and there, because that's what makes it more realistic. And I'm not really worried about this here because that will not be visible. This is just a cheapy dollar brush from Home Depot. I just went and grabbed a couple. I have several brushes, but they all have the really dark brown already uh, staining them. And I did not want to run the risk of contaminating and making random dark spots in this. Add into it. If you want it darker, you would just go over that again. But I don't want it darker because I want it to make, uh, I want it to be a bigger contrast between the two colors. Okay, 
I'm not going to bore you with the whole Mod Podge layering. After this is completely dry, I'm going to cover every part that actually matters with Mod Podge. Some people are successful at not sealing their inks. Those people must like have witchcraft on their side because every attempt I've ever done without sealing it, whether I let it dry for days or I uh, did it right away, it just has always, always backfired on me. And for me, what it does is it makes little bleached out spots, almost like when you are tr trying to do like a watercolor looking tumbler with inks. I might as well just go all the way around so I have lots of work options here. Um, kind of like if you're doing a watercolor one and you spray it with alcohol and it makes those dots. That's what happens when you um, spray sealer. That's what has happened to me when I have sprayed sealer and it bleached it and ruined it. I was so sad. I had a beautiful wood grain on multiple occasions that I ruined. I'm not gonna do any knots on this one uh, because for this base color, I really don't need it. And I'm actually not worried about it like going horizontal away from what I'm trying to do because I'm about to cover all that up. Just a couple more spots here. I might do some knots, maybe one or two, depending on the placement of my decals. Ah, this is not working in my favor today. I'm just not coordinated. The flu has actually struck our house and I'm doing everything in my power to stay away from it. And that means I'm literally dropping Gatorade at the door and running away because I cannot get sick. So I'll put my decal here and here most likely. I can still see my paint drips in one of those spots wherever it went right there where it kind of creeps up. That's okay because that's not something I'm heartbroken about since I'm covering all that. Just a teeny bit more. I feel like it's kind of, I guess blurry is a good enough word for it. It just doesn't have very much definition. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to let this dry completely and then I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge. Usually I do two really thick coats of Mod Podge. Um, I just paranoia. Same reason I over seal other stuff as well. So that's all I'm worried about there. Just giving me that kind of light wood grain base. The color that's going to go on top is right here. I'm going to put this color on top. So that's really going to show through really nicely. Oh, here's a perfect example. This is one of my oops cups because it ended up with a weird thing. I was um, sanding and then I nicked it. So if you can tell, see all those speckles of, makes me think of wood paneling. It's really frustrating, but this is what happens when you, when I, not everyone, seal it without enough Mod Podge on it. 
I had such a good looking cup and then I ruined it um, because I didn't seal it properly. And that's okay. I've got other plans for it. I'm actually gonna do probably the reverse of this. Since I've got a good base and it's not super obvious to most people that don't know what they're looking for, I, I'll actually use this as my base because then I can camouflage all of this oopsie right here. Uh, plus, I don't like how that turned out. It was quite ugly. So that's all for this step. We've got our wood grain here and we are going to let that dry completely. It's actually really windy outside. I'll just go stick it outside. That way I can Mod Podge it a little faster because uh, might as well take advantage of mother nature, man. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so here is the next step. This is removable vinyl. I'm going to be taking out the pieces. You can kind of see the cutouts there. I'm gonna be taking out the pieces that uh, I do want color on because the part that I don't want to be darker, uh, where I want this to come through, I'm gonna leave that on there. Uh, so I'm gonna pick off the pieces and then I will spray paint it and then wood grain it and then pick these off. Make sure when you're doing this, you're using removable vinyl. I've seen plenty of stories of people saying that they accidentally used permanent vinyl and it was a hot mess to get off of there. And certain, um, whatever you're gonna do on top, like if you're gonna glitter it or whatever, you have to make sure you're able to even find these pieces. I've heard of people putting uh, like hot glue dots on top. I think I'll be okay because I'm just doing a layer of white and then wood graining it. There's glitter all over this thing. I just got back from a cruise and I am still on the water right now. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick off the parts. You'll see it uh, at the very end, what I ended up leaving and then um, We'll do the next step in just a bit. So I have done a light coat of spray paint now. You can see the decal underneath there. The paper gets caught on there, but that's okay. So I'm going to let this dry completely and then I'm going to wood grain it and then um, peel up the decal, seal it in epoxy. So we'll be back for the next step in just a sec. All right, so we have that nice and ready to go. I've got my Home Depot brush here. Got my glove on the messy hand because as I've mentioned in other videos, I work with my hands all day uh, working with patients glasses. The last thing I need is brown smears on my fingers. <laughs> really gross, but really true. So for this layer, we're gonna just use the Bria Reese Brown and I haven't done one like this before, so I'm kind of winging it as I go. I don't want to go super heavy around this, but I definitely can't leave any white spots. But I'm worried about leaving um, or creating a ring around it. So I don't really plan on dropping it straight onto that uh, if I can help it. I just kind of want to work around it like this. And when this is done and dry, I'll seal it with Mod Podge. I was tempted to use teak wood, but I really like the reddish tones that this one has. When you're doing a decal like this, make sure you're getting in between the little crevices right there. Um, if I was coating this with glitter, I would definitely need to make it where I can find my decal, but this is pretty visible. I'm not worried. And then once it's underneath the inks, it'll be even more visible. I'm not too worried about dabbing right there because there's not enough of it to actually have a wood grain effect. So it's all right. I really don't want to like have to drop it down in those holes, but I might have to. We'll see. So 
I'd be curious to know what everybody's going to do for the summer. I just got back from an office vacation, which was super fun. We took a cruise to Cozumel and back. And then in the summertime, we plan on taking the kids to New Mexico to do White Sands, Carlsbad. And someone mentioned the Indian cave dwellings or cliff, cliff dwellers. I can't say that. Maybe we can't go if I can't say it. Uh, the cliff dwellers. Um, I think it's in a national park. We're going to get one of those um, park passes that should should take care of a majority of what we want to do for this trip. If anyone's from New Mexico and has any advice, I would gladly take it. The only major trip we've ever taken our kids on was a cruise and we really didn't have to do anything but show up and have a good time. It's our first major vacation that actually requires us to do some research and figure out what we're going to do. <clears throat> Whoa, get back over there. If you like my videos as you're watching them, if you don't mind giving them a thumbs up, that is most appreciated. I think having those thumbs up might help with the search results. I'm not positive because I haven't bothered taking the time to um, look into the ins and outs and the logistics and all of that. I just enjoy making the videos. I'm already doing these things anyways. So if it can be helpful in any kind of capacity, I'm down with that. All right, I've almost got all the white spots. You can kind of see a few more in there. Like I said, I'm trying not to drip it straight down on there. I don't want it to make a solid outline. Um, I think I said this in one of the other parts of the video. Make sure you're using removable vinyl. Otherwise, I've heard that it can really be a beast trying to get it off of the cup. Which makes sense because permanent vinyl is not supposed to be removable. Some people even say they use contact paper. Which, that would be really easy to come by. Um, my only worry with that for myself is, depending on what I was doing, it may not be easy to see. But I haven't really had to use contact paper for anything except for transfer paper in a long time. Alright, so that's a little heavier than what I want right there, so I'm just going to go around here and make it the rest of it darker so it has that more red tone. It's heavier here than it is here. I said that wrong. It's not heavier than I want. It's just uh, darker here than it is here. So we're going to make up for that. And then we'll work on the dad side. I love wood greens. They are so pretty. They can be feminine, masculine, neutral, unisex, whatever you want to call it. And put anything with them. I've seen some cute wood grains that had uh, teal glitter, red glitter. Possibilities are endless. I still haven't decided what I want to do with the cowhide that I'm working on. I've got it ready for a good seal. It's not quite ready for epoxy yet. It kind of got put on the back burner. I had some orders pop up, which I'm thankful for. Um, but I do anticipate already doing some more. I've actually already bought two more cow hides. Mm, I'm lying. The two pieces I bought are actually the tooled leather, which I also did a tutorial on. The cow hide tumbler I'm not quite done with, uh, so it's not a full tutorial yet. But it will be. I've got parts one and parts two, parts one and two posted. Just kind of essentially mod podging the hair down and trimming it around. So next step is going to be sealing it really good some more. And then um, 
probably fill in this the gap with epoxy before I start trying to do glitter. I'm going to do a knot right in here in a little bit. It's kind of a good spot for it. Nice thing about alcohols is your options are endless. Bad thing about alcohols is they kind of dry too fast sometimes. One thing about this kind of tumbler too is you're not really on a time crunch. I really haven't been able to get out here lately. That's why there's such a big gap in between videos. I had my office trip and then I've had family stuff um, coming up or come up right between that and this. And um, so this has kind of just been sitting there waiting in the wings. Once again, I got to take care of the white spots on here. I'm also trying to avoid that super solid line that's trying to form right there. Sometime soon, I want to do a Milky Way. Probably what I'll do actually before that. <clears throat> if anyone has seen the ship lap, some people call it shipwreck, but I prefer sh the ship lap when I see that. It looks more accurate because it doesn't look like a wreck. It looks like a ship in the water. Those tumblers are beautiful. I'm going to do a little one with... Um, Maybe like a Kraken tentacle coming up out of the water. I'm going to try and work on that this week. I've just got to finish watching all the instructions on how to do that. It's hard to do a tutorial if I don't know what I'm doing. i got to at least have a general idea. <laughs> this is definitely being more stubborn than usual. Feel like it's spreading as easily as it normally would. Another option on getting your alcohol is this way, but I feel like this takes a lot more inks to achieve the same general result. But sometimes whatever you're working on, it's just not cooperating, so that's the easiest way, or it's an awkward angle or something like that. It's really pretty. Can't really see all the green in person like you can. I mean, <laughs> I cannot talk today. You can't really see all the green detail on the camera as you can in real life. Got a smooth spot there. It was very obviously just ink. Get rid of that. Yeah, so that's really pretty. I think she's really gonna like this for her dad's birthday gift. So now I'm just going to do kind of basics on the bottom. doesn't have to be super fancy. But when you're doing the bottom, make sure that your brush doesn't go over the edge and ruin your other wood grain. Because then you have some repair work to do at that point. Kind of like that just did. And 
It also takes a while for the um, brushes to get hydrated. I feel like once they've been used for a couple minutes, it doesn't seem to be as bad of having to re-wet as quickly. But that's just an observation that may or may not be accurate. Seems legit. Sometimes I'll actually even put a knot on the bottom just to kind of camouflage. There's a hair that came out of the brush. Just to kind of camouflage that awkward conjunction almost. But it doesn't always need it. There we go. It's not quite so defined. Looks a little bit like a scarred wood or something. So let's throw a knot right here. It's a good spot for it. Come on. So we're just going to let that spread a little bit. Let it dry just a little. Kind of dab it around like that. Don't like the knots to be completely rounded. But you don't want like a pointed oval real bad either. Cause I've seen seen some that kind of look like lady bits. Which sounds kind of crude, but it's true. I saw one the other day that oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Somebody made a big old knot right here. And then they put a water slide of a squirrel, which squirrels are black and brown anyway, so you don't really need it to be a pop. You can kind of just use the wood grain as your base of color, and then the black kind of stands out on its own. And um, it was great. It looked just like a painting my papa did of a squirrel peeking out of a tree. It's really funny that he painted a squirrel because he hated them so bad. He really hated squirrels. I'm just kind of drying this a little faster so I can do that. We just want to soften that up a bit. You don't want it like super defined edges, but we also don't want it like heavy, heavy texture either necessarily. So now I'm just going to kind of go around it like that just to kind of, oopsie, I didn't mean to do that. Kind of go around it to ease up some of those brush scratches there. Yeah, just like that. <clears throat> so that is that step. And since the other side is dry, I'm going to work on it. If I can get this lid on here. So I'm going to use my handy dandy turner arm here to hold it for this part. And that didn't want to work. I just saw a spot that this has some white. I gotta fix that real quick. Just kind of blend that in just a little bit. Wood grains are not perfect and symmetrical. Alright, so 
you can kind of see the picture outline there pretty easily. So I have this tool, but I don't feel like it's sharp enough sometimes. So I have this super old Cricut tool. I actually broke the very tip of it off because I'm really bad about using my stuff for things that I shouldn't. And I sure did use it to uh, create a vent hole on a chicken watering jug, which is probably the most country thing I'll say in a bit. Let's go ahead and throw on another glove so that you don't have to worry about this. I didn't anticipate that cracking like that, but not entirely caught off guard here. So we've got our light wood grain underneath, kind of peeking through. Isn't that pretty? So in a little bit, I'll take some cotton wrapped around this and kind of clean up that little spot right there. It's not too major. It was probably on my glove and then whenever I touch that to pick it up, I messed it up, made a spot. I'll be sure not to do that again. Just kind of slowly but surely lifting your vinyl. If you've got tweezers, I know Cricut usually comes with tweezers too. Um, that may or may not work. I've tried using my tweezers for stuff before that it was a joke. But then other times it was fine. So it might work for you. This is not wanting to come off my hands. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like a cartoon over here off camera. Could not get the vinyl off of my fingers. It's still not off of my fingers, but it's off in a, in a enough way, you could say. There we go. That's what I was wanting earlier. So that's that one, that piece. I'm gonna roll it around and do the dad side now. Then I'm gonna let this dry really, really good. And then I'll come out here tonight and I'll Mod Podge it. So that leave well enough alone there. Kind of see that. I will come in and clean up that spot. I'm almost 100% certain that that is something I touched whenever I was pinching up that piece. So basically you're just lifting it just enough that you can get a hold of it, but not digging in so hard that you're leaving a gouge underneath. If you scratch it, it'll almost always cover up with epoxy, but good grief. There we go. I can't imagine trying to do that if you accidentally used permanent vinyl. That'd give me more gray hair than I already have. Ooh, I found the secret. Put it on the back of a piece of Cricut trash, or vinyl trash. Okay, got some of it off. So I'll come out here tonight and I'll Mod Podge it to seal it really good. Probably Mod Podge it three times. Just because every time I've tried not sealing it, it has backfired on me. And my wood grain has ruined. And this order is already overdue, so. 
Anything I can do to avoid any more delays is helpful. This is just not working in my favor today. Good grief. Oh my gosh, I can hear one of my chickens right now laying an egg. If y'all have ever heard the little barnyard sound things where the chickens make that really weird barking noise, it's not made up. That is really what they sound like when they're laying eggs. There's a restaurant around here called Golden Chick, and they have this little quarter machine that you drop a little quarter in there and then it spits out a little egg, but not before the chicken lays the egg. So she has that little song going on and makes that really weird sound. And uh, I always thought it was just kind of for show for the machine, but it's not. It's real life. It's hilarious. We we're getting in the car earlier and one of them was making a really bad sound. I told my daughter, I was like, that one's having a hard time, and <laughs> glad we're not the ones out there dealing with that. All right, almost done. I kind of messed it up just a little bit right there. I'm going to touch it up with alcohol in a little while. I'll wait for it to completely dry just to make it easier on me. If you've got really good craft tweezers, this would definitely work in your favor. Okay, ta-da, all done. So that is all we have to do to that right now. It's going to take a little time to dry. I want it to completely dry. I've definitely got some moisture still down here. I'll come through and I'll tinker with that. I actually have alcohol prep pads that I'll probably just wrap around the tip here and then do that, but it's exactly what I wanted it to look like. I think she's gonna like it a lot. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate, excuse me, I hiccuped. Uh, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer anything. I am not a master of anything, but if I know the answer, I'll share it with you. Um, if you like my videos, please give them a thumbs up. If you like my stuff in general, please consider subscribing. That way you get notifications uh, when the next videos get loaded. And that's it. If you um, think of anything that you really, really want to see as a tutorial, let me know. I've got a working list going, but like I said, I think the ship lap um, is my next one I want to do. And then the um, Milky Way after that. So you guys have a good one and I'll see you next time.